okay we were doing this right the first order reaction half life and uh, the complete life we did the complete life will bring at infinity yes we finished till here i guess you remembered kiran uh, we did integrated rate law for second order second order we did right uh, yes ma'am we did second order we just did the t is equal to 1 by k 1 by a minus 1 by m so then we have finished with the zero to, uh, first order also i guess then okay yes, we'll move further no issues we finish with this right i guess t is equal to 1 by k 1 by a minus 1 by a not till here we yes ma'am i yes ma'am i just wrote this down Okay. Okay. Half life t half will be what? It will be t is equal to t half and a will be a naught by two. So putting the values, what do we get? T half is equal to one by k one by a minus one by a naught. This was integrated law for second order, where a will be replaced by a naught by t, uh, a naught by two. So it will be two minus one by a naught. So the ultimate, this one half life will be one by or t half is equal to one k a naught, right? Ah uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, moving further with the third order kinetics. Third order kinetics will be a k r is equal to k a root no or to the power. Three concentration of a to the uh, concentration of a to the power three. So here rate will be integrated rate law will be if you see the solution r is equal to this both will be equal to d a by a cube is equal to minus k a k d t. T is equal to t naught. t is equal to zero and time t is t, right? A at zero is a naught. Time t is a. So putting it into the value, we get this. One by a square is equal to one by, oh sorry, one by two a square minus one by two a naught two is equal to k t minus zero. So half will take half common here. So it will be one by a square minus one by a naught square is equal to k t, or t is equal to one by two k, one by a square minus one by a naught to the power two. So this is what we get as the integrated rate law for the third order reaction, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you show the previous page, ma'am? Mm -hmm. Just a minute. Here it will be three, I guess. A cube is there. How did I go to a square? Okay, it will be from here. Uh huh. It will be a square only, right? Hmm. Here it is. Uh, yes, ma'am. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Should I go to the next page? Yes, ma'am. Here it is. From here, you get this A not C. Concentration of a one by 
concentration graph of 1 by concentration square versus time is this. So 1 by a square that is equal to 2a from this equation y axis will be 1 by a to the power 2 and this will be 2k t and this will be 1 by a naught square. So from here you get tan theta is equal to 2k. That is how you will calculate the whole thing when your graph is given. After this, which chapter are we going to do? Uh, probably surface chemistry, ma'am. I'm not sure. School starts from tomorrow, so we'll be told after that. Okay. So like you keep shifting. So what about your school? Previous school, you'll be shifting your school to this school here again? No, ma'am, we're not allowed to change school mid session. That is like, if it was normal, uh, non COVID scenario, we'd have been able to shift during December also because we could say that my father has been posted. But now that it's just term one, term two, we can't keep term one in one place and term two in another place. So I have come to Delhi for a few days and then again on 8th, I'm going back to Pune because I have to stay there, give term two, and then come back to Delhi. So where will you stay as such in that there? Uh, we've rented a house, ma'am, as of now. Okay. But we'll have to come back again. But, and now they're not even told when the term two exams are going to be, so we don't know when we're coming back. Okay. Yes. So you are your mother will be shifting or you alone will be shifting there? Uh, we've rented the house and like we've put bare essential things in that house. So okay. after this on 8th, me and my mother will head back to back Pune. My okay. father is going to stay back here because he has to assume duty up there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. yes ma'am. Moving further to half-life. Half life will be T half, that will be A will become A naught by 2. So putting the values, if you can see the calculations, it will be T half is equal to 3 upon 2K A naught square. This will be the half life for the third order reaction. Just, just go through the calculation and ask me if you have any doubt in it. Uh, pretty much clear. So now based on this, basically we'll just be given a reaction, told its order and told to find out like. Yeah, I'll have numerical second. solving with it. So don't worry. Yes, You're clear with it? But I, yes, but I still don't, I still don't understand like uh, without being given the value of that X and Y in the rate law, how do we find out the order of the reaction? Is it just given or like? Will they ask us to find out by giving us a that's what there. it is when you do the numerical you'll come to know it so it'll be like nth order if i have numericals wait i'll show you one or two numericals see here it is here see i've put up numericals so accordingly you'll get a practice of it okay So see, 
now for if we talk of the integrated rate law now we cannot find out for all the reactions so there is a way of finding it out whether it is like you know uh, whether you can go with it or we can understand it and do it directly we cannot go if i ask you find the rate integrated rate law for the seventh order will you go calculating it no it becomes difficult right so in that if you see the second law if the nth order integrated law for the second order was 1 by k, 1 by a minus 1 by a naught, right? Concentration of this. In the third order, because it was third, here it was 2, here it is square. If it is nth order, it will be n minus 1 k, n minus 1 and n minus 1. So, for example, if it is a fourth order, then it will be 3k, 1 by a cube minus 1 by a naught cube. Fifth order, then 1 by 4k, 1 by n, uh, a to the power 4, 1 by a naught to the power 4. And if it is 10th order, then it will be 9, 9 and 9. So, this way, usually you can use this same integrated law for the second order and find the other orders remaining. Clear? So, you have to remember this one. And this nth order kinetics will be applicable for more than or equal to the second order. For first order and second order, you see that this was not the integrated lot which we found out. But from here onwards, it will remain the same. The integrated rate law will remain the same from the second order, only that the value of the this part will change. Clear? Uh, yes. For the zeroth and first law, we just got like a naught by k and something like that. Yes, yes. So when it comes to graph, also, if you see the graph, will also have the same type of this thing. For nth order, it will be one by concentration n minus one. That is, it it will be when you go with this. So, slope will be n minus 1, k is equal to 10 theta. Half life again, see, second order, 1 by k, a naught, k into a naught. Third order, 3 by 2, k into a naught square. So, nth order will be 2 minus 2, n to the power minus 1, minus 1. See, for example, it is third. So, here it will be like this. Clear? 2 n to the power minus 1, minus 1 to the base, n minus 1 k, a naught, n minus 1. This is for the general half-life for all the orders, 2 or more than 2. Got it till here? Yes, so, why is it that the 0th and 1st order has like log and all in it? But the rest of them because of the concentration, see in the zeroth order, the concentration of the reactant is not up, not you know into consideration. So you got a different thing. And uh, first order is that much not effective with the reactant. It is, but not to that extent where you see with the third, second order onwards. Got it? Basically, just so like the integration thing. I mean, yes. In terms of mathematics, I can understand it, but like in terms of logic, somehow it's going beyond me. Yeah, but it's like that. It's not exactly said why it is so, but the thing is that because of the concentration, as you go on the order of the reaction, the rate also varies, right? Uh, when yes, you talk. So because of yes, that sir. thing, might be the thing. I'm also exactly not sure why, because nowhere it is mentioned. Why is it so? Got it? Yes, uh, can you show the previous page? Huh? Yeah. Are, are, are. I'm increasing and it is decreasing. Yeah. The whole slide? Uh, yes, I'm just the two formulas. Please. No, it should be the two.
राइट Yeah, that's all half life. Got it? For any n, even zero and one, right? T half is directly proportional to a naught one minus n. So here it is. See, it this one zero and one. So here, C T T half is directly proportional to a naught here, and here also T naught is not at all like no relation with a naught. One minus one will be zero, so it will be equal to one. Got it? Why it is mentioned here? C if it is T half here, if you see that is directly proportional. One minus zero. So the value will be directly proportional to the concentration of the a naught. But here in this case, T half for the first life, it'll be one minus one. The value of a naught is one minus one. That will be equal to one. So here it will be one of a naught a. So it will be directly proportional for these two cases, right? But here, if you see, it is inversely proportional in other cases. Got it? What does this statement mean? So remember, this, like we can't find any proportionality. Huh? Uh, we can't find any proportionality like this in terms of the the full life. No, because okay. full life it becomes infinity from the second first order only. Remembered? Okay. That's why. From the first life itself, it become infinity, so it won't continue for that on, right? Uh, it's infinity only for the first order, though, right? Like for the no, rest of the. No, but then second days. order, if you do the calculation, it will come to infinity also. Because there is no such reaction practically where it goes on to hundred percent react conversion of the reactant to product. Got it? Okay. Okay. Coming to this, this is an important thing that T half is directly proportional to a not one minus n. We till now did n minus one. Remembered everywhere we did n minus one, but here because it is inversely here, if you see, it goes up to one minus n. So this is a important thing which you need to re remember for all the orders. It will be one minus n if you do it directly proportional. Uh, what's different between this and the one above? Here, this one. Yes, ma'am. This is true for this one, both the cases. But here, when you see the exact thing, it will be like T is inversely proportional for the second order and other orders. It will be a not n minus one. If you see the previous uh, slide, it will be n minus one to the power. So which we take it as inversely proportional. When we talk in general term, it is inversely proportional here, right? For the Second and second order, and from there on, all the other is inversely proportional. For but for the zero order and this one, it is directly proportional. You can say. What is? Yes, ma'am. But then, what's different between the box on top and the box on bottom? It's Nothing. It's just to show you the uh, this thing relation how it is, and uh, the it just mentioned that it is important because many other times you will be using this in the numericals to identify things, right? So just a, how does it relate? That's what is shown here, and here also just in that case is important thing what we have discussed here. This one, that's all. 
Nothing has such any difference. Okay. Okay. Now, method to determine order of reaction. There are four methods. Either you de determine the half-life method, either you use the graphical method or integrated rate law, hit and trial method also, or the hit and trial method and initial rate method, which was taught to you before also. Right? The rate method. So, now if you have given half-life method, how to identify a reaction using a half-life method, right? So, zero order is one uh, half is equal to A naught by 2K. And second order is 1 by K A naught. So, first order is this one. So, what do you get is 1 minus N. So, N will tell you for any order of reaction if this is and you find the value of N, you will directly find the order of the reaction when you are given a half life. See here. If in question given, initial A is T1, A2 is T2, half-life, right? T half. So, T1 by T2 is equal to A1 by A2, 1 minus N. You can write it like this and if you get the value of N, you can easily find the order of the reaction. So, here, the half-life of decomposition of a compound is 20 minutes. When the initial concentration uh, compound is doubled, Half-life reduces by 10 times. First order reaction. First order reaction. So, you need to find the value, which N value, what will it be? So, if you can go through it once and see and then solve it. See, T half is equal to time given initially was T1. That time, say the initial concentration be X. And when half uh, T2 is the second time, 10 minutes, that time it will be doubled. The reaction rate will double. Right? The concentration of the compound is double. Then it will be T, uh, 10. So, 20 upon 10 is equal to X by A2X. Agreed? Is equal to 1 minus X. When you simplify, you will get the value of N is equal to 2. Therefore, it is a second order reaction. Clear? How will you find out the order of reaction? Uh, what is that first order of reaction in the statement? So, it will be not find. It will be first. It will be find the order of reaction. It will be find. Okay. Want to do uh, solve another one or you can want to solve this again in your, on your own? I will do another one. The next one? Yes, ma'am. Just a second, let me check. Okay. Half the question is here and half is here. Okay, just go through this and then I'll go. See, for a gaseous reaction, the initial and the corresponding half-life data is shown. Find the order of the reaction, whether it is 0, 1, 2 or third order reaction. The data given is here. I'll show you that. Uh, what's the 100 and 105? That is the, uh, this thing. Time. No. Pressure, sorry, pressure. Eight second. No, 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 no. That is 100 and 105 is what? There's nothing to do as such with that. I don't know. I don't remember why it is written. 
So then the question it. had something to do with pressure. How did we get 66.66? 66? We got that with the gas law. Yeah, because constant at this pressure. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. It's the pressure. My, just a minute. Gaseous will have pressure, right? Yes, ma'am. So, you're asking how did we get 66.66? That is when the pressure is applied, this much concentration of the reactant will be there and this will be the half-life. When pressure is increased by, uh, like it was altered, not increased or decreased, I cannot say it became this and that the half-life was this. So, now you need to find the order of the reaction. So, technically, we didn't have anything to do with pressure in the first place, right? No, 100 and 105, we don't have to do anything technically with that. Given. And the half-life, is that 0.235 or is it 235? Sir? 235, sir. not decimal. Uh, I don't quite know how to calculate this one. We have to like take it into logs and all. Okay. Let's see. No, no. Log you don't have to take as such. Simple. At this T1, this was the concentration. At time T, this was the concentration. You just divide it. 1 by 4 is equal to 2, 1 minus N. So, 4, you convert it into uh, base 2. So, it will be 2 square, 2 to the power minus 2 is equal to 2 to the power 1 minus n. Or n will be third order reaction. This is simple as that. Uh, Ma'am, it should be 940 in case we want to divide it by 2. But which one? 950 is, it's like if we want to divide it, if you want to make it 1 by 4, then it should be 940 instead of 950. Because 950 is not divisible by 235 directly. So, might not be like just a minute. Then it will be approx value they have taken, you know. Uh, a round of value they have taken up. Might be like this. Yes, ma'am. Because if we have to do 235 by 950, we will. So, there will be 4.04. So, they have taken it as 4. That's what it is. 
in uh, this thing chemistry for this kind of reactions you can take off a round of value right 0 0.0 doesn't matter that much got it yes ma'am because uh, yes ma'am so basically we get uh, if we, if we have to do 1 by 4 then we would get 0.25 right and with this we are getting 0.247 kind of something huh. this one when you solve it will be 4.04 something like this 4.04 so that is be taken as 4 up to the power 4 so it will be solved it like this Got it? Right. Do it for this one. How do we relate the pressure to the concentration now? Your pressure is nothing but their concentration only. If you talk of your seven hundred foot. 30 and 104 is the concentration only. That initial pressure was this, then the concentration was this at this time. Like this. Pressure is nothing like now, right now at your this thing till what we have done. Pressure is just to give you the information that it is for the gaseous reaction. But what is given is the concentration only. Uh, I'm getting N as one now. Actually, it could be two as well. N is one. It could be one or two. One. Yes, ma'am, but uh, like we, we are taking this as zero, like one raised to power zero as on the left hand side. Hmm. We are taking left hand side as zero, like one raised to power zero is one, but then one raised to power one is also one. So it could yeah. be one or two. Yeah, it will be like this, you can see. Both ways it is correct. And your order of reaction will be one, right? So how do we know if we should take one or two? Because mathematically both are correct. Yeah, mathematically you have to do. Because this is power. So when you re relate a power to one directly, you cannot do. So that will be one, one, sorry. 1 minus n is a power, right, to certain say a. So you have a base a here to the power 0. Then only the value is become 1, right? So that is why power to power you have to take. Not the indices. Got my point? Right. Okay. Next is graphical thing. Concentration of the reactant, concentration log, concentration 1 by concentration to the n versus time. That is how you will be doing it. See, this is the graph related, but graph related with your level, like me, simple CBSC boards, they do not ask much question to the graph. They ask more questions regarding uh, the, the graph in the competitive exams, right? 
So if you remember the simple graphs which we had done, that for zero order it is this one, first order, second order, th and so on. It will continue, and you have to use that y is equal to m x plus this formula, and then tan theta is equal to the slope. Right, that one is the simple way to find out out with the graph if it comes. Most probably, this is for the uh, competitive level people only. They come by the graph. Right now, using the integrated rate law or the hit and trial method, check if the first order. Check if it's first order. First order k is equal to two not three by two point three not three by t log ten a to a not to the power a base a. Find two values of k using two sets of data. Check if both the values of k are same. Then it is a first order. Else zero order. So that is what. How will you identify if it is a first order or a zero order reaction? A is equal to a not minus k t. K is equal to a not minus a by t. Two values of k same. Then zero order. Else move to the second and Second order or the and so on fourth, right? This is how you will be using the hit and trial method given to you. Clear till here? Uh, yes, these are just the formulas that we derived, right? Yes. So if you have find the k value and if they are same, two values are same. Then it can be a, a like zero order reaction, or else you need to move on to the second order or the third or, or second order onwards. Say for example, here is an example which is given to you. If you can solve it out, check first order reaction. See, concentration of A is zero. Time is zero. Uh, sorry, fifty time is C. Concentration of A is 30 times is 10, and concentration of A is 18 times is 20. So you have to find the order of the reaction. Find the value of K. The any two sets you can use to find the value of K. Out of the three, you can use any two sets and find the value of both the k's for both the sets. Sorry, two k's for both the sets. So in Pune, your schools are starting, or it is still online, which will be working because cases are increasing, Maharashtra. Uh, they made it hybrid as of now, man. Like we have a choice. To come not that, not because to come. our school also, like recently, yesterday I got a news that one of my student, my class student, she was tested positive. Right, man. And uh, she was with me day before yesterday, not the day before yesterday, the day before that all. The whole day she was with <coughs> me in the evening also for the tuitions. And for the morning classes also. So, but for God's sake, and I am vaccinated, so I'm not infected right now. But other students along with her, I think they are infected, I guess. One or two of them got infection. But because hers was caught on the initial stage only, so not much is an issue with her in the health concern, like with the health. So now this COVID is just spreading normal viral thing, you know, until you detect it. Yes, ma'am. Initially, our school had said that they would make it mandatory to be offline, but then they immediately changed the decision. Ours they made it optional now. Ours was also the same that we had our uh, term, like first term PA assessment, periodic assessment too. Then they said we'll do it, you know, compulsorily offline. But then as the started cases increased, they said let it be hybrid. And then the municipality 
shut it down for a week time so till mond uh, wednesday it will be shut down yes online classes will be on regularly I'm getting two and six now. Two and six. K one is equal to K. So oh, we can't like directly use the K zero. No, directly you cannot do it. But see, you are not going to solve it much. You just have to solve it in a simple way. Do not go on to solve the log. Just solve it in a simple way, if you can see. So, what is the method for this? Now we have to check for each and everything. Like no, no, any two data, any two. Like for example, here with me, I had taken this and I had taken this one, fifty by zero. <coughs> Sorry, fifty and thirty. That is zero and ten, uh, and fifty and eighteen. Initial to always I have to take, right? Initial I have to always take. That is fifty concentration and zero time. That I have to take hundred and ten percent. But apart from that, I have used like this, and we have find out out the values. Yes, ma'am. But like, uh, how do we know which formula we have to use in this? Because like, why is it that we can't use the k equals a minus a not thirty? Because we don't know whether it is a zero order or a second order. We have to use the formula for first the using the. This is for the first order reaction, right? Yes, yes or no? Yes. See now here I cannot use zero order integrated rate law because my concentration of the reactant is varying, right? If you can see the reactant concentration is affecting the rate of reaction. When it was fifty, then the time was zero. When it became thirty, the reactant reduced. My time increased. So my reactant is affecting my time, so I cannot use the zero order. So the next is first order I have to use because we don't know yet whether it is a first order, second order, or zero order. So first we need to check for the first order reaction. If not first order comes out or below first order, if it does not come out, then I have to go for my second order reaction. There you can directly use the K wala thing. Got it? If this does not come out to be equal, got my point? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then, like, uh, progressively, we have to keep changing the value of k based on the. Yes. Like, which formula we are using? Right. So, like, if first yeah. order, like, how do we uh, how do we find out if First order fails, ma'am. That is, we get different values of k. Hmm. Then, uh, uh, then we just need to use the rest of the formulas. That is, like, just any of one of the formula will work with it. Then, then you can directly uh, use this kind of formula where this one we did. Okay. Okay. okay then we can directly use half life and find it out. You can do it like that also. Any one can be used to find the value of n then directly, right? But first, when you are given this kind of comparison, hit and trial method has to be done. Then, using the integrated rate law for the first order, if it fails, then you can directly find out the nth value. Clear? Now, integrated rate law. This is what is integrated rate law for which one? Zero order reaction. Yes, ma'am. But this we would only use if the 
time remain constant wait wait this? wait wait this is from here again the whole thing has come up stuck up here as i said from here my all the pages are that of the initial one which i did i'll check my notebook Okay, after this, you have your RNS equation. Now we'll move on to the RNS equation. So that is what it was uh, showed here. Now the next is your RNS equation where did I start? RNS equation will tell you the effect of temperature on the reaction. Till now we were talking with regard to concentration. Now we will be talking on the based of the temperature. Like if the temperature is varied, what happens with the reaction? That is what we will be dealing in this uh, uh, RNS equation. Okay, the RNS equation, effect of temperature on the rate of reaction. In most of the reaction on increasing temperature, rate also increases. That is, rate constant increases, right? Means the value of K will also increase. So, rate is equal to K, that is rate constant into concentration to the power N. Approximate de dependence K on, N, or K on T, that is time coefficient. K will be dependent on the time coefficient, that is temperature coefficient, not the time. Sorry, temperature. It is found that whenever there was a reaction done, it was found that 10 degree rise in the temperature, the rate of the reaction nearly doubled. Means if I increase my temperature to 10 times, 10 degrees, the reaction was increased two times, right? So the temperature coefficient is equal to K. T plus 10 degrees upon K, that is upon KT degree, right? That is increased by 10 degrees. So, 10 degree K will remain as K. But when I increase it by 10 more degrees, then it will become to 3K. 10 more, then it will be double 9K. If I double this, it will be 27K. So, on fourth as per the practical approach now for a particular reaction temperature coefficient is 2 if rate of reaction at 20 degree is 8 for x find the rate of reaction at 80 degree so what will be it for 20 degree will be in degree it will be x so you keep on doubling the value at 80 degree you will be getting as 64 x the concentration will be rate of reaction at 20 degree is x so the rate of the action will be 64x. Clear? Still here? All right. Any doubts? Uh, you want to go so through it once? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, these are just experimental values, right? There's yeah, no... these are done experimentally. And it says there that the values are between 2 and 3. So, like, how do we know which one to take? Right now, uh, how will I say? Uh, this is just that 
experimentally it is being said once we start with the theoretical part you'll come to know how we were going to use that right experimentally the value lies between 2 and 3 only it will not exceed 3 and not go below 2 you can say that way So it is, uh, it's very spontaneous, man, is it? So like before 10 degrees, it won't change at all? No. Because to any reaction, as I said before, also for any reaction to take place, first it has to reach the activation energy, right? For that certain temperature is required. So once you start a reaction, immediately it won't reach the activation temperature. It has to reach. So reactivation energy, it has to take certain temperature and then only it will reach to that energy level. Got it? Right. And it's again not necessary that uh, these would be in like multiples of temperature. It could be any random temperature. Yes. But if like it depends on type of reaction, exothermic or endothermic. Here what we are talking is just for an endothermic. Exothermic reaction, this won't be applicable because there, we, if we put the temperature, then the reverse reaction will be possible, right? So that also we need to keep in mind. This so is only the for whole the of this RNAs, the whole of the RNAs equation is only for endothermic reaction. Yes, till that we like it's not exactly mentioned, but logically, if you talk of obviously that is when the reaction is temperature dependent, but that means that it is only for the uh, where we have to apply the temperature, we cannot take out the temperature, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, accurate def, uh, de, uh, dependency of K on T will be explained by the RNF equation where K is equal to A into E to the power minus EA upon RT. K is the rate of rate constant, A is the frequency factor, RNS factor or three exponential factor, E is the exponential constant. EA is equal to is the activation energy which unit whose unit is joules per mole. R is the universal gas constant that is when it is Kelvin which it is always in Kelvin. So we take it as as 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin and T is your temperature in Kelvin. Right. So this is what is your RNS equation. Right. Now. This temperature dependence, how it happens is say, for example, you have a reaction A2 plus B2 gives you 2AB. Now here the collision theory works a lot. What is collision theory? When two molecules collide, they give out certain energy, right? So not all collisions between the reactant molecules are effective and they give product. Means when the molecules, they are in random in the container, right, in which they are made to react. Now, not all collisions are that much effective that they will get converted into product. So now, how do you defect a, if, uh, define an effective collision? One is orientation barrier. In the effective collision, you have an orientation barrier. Means head to head collision if it happens. Means say A is directly heating to B. Then it is an effective collision. We call it as head, head on collision. 
but say for example a a is joining and b b is joining they are either joining like the sideways two molecules of a joining with two molecules of b or they are joining in this pattern one horizontal one vertical then this is non not effective because this b and this a are inactive in this collision they do not take part anything in this collision so they are that is not effective effective as in they will 100% get converted into product after the collision but here because they are not getting collided they are known as a non effective collision clear uh, and like what does the arrhenius theory have to do with this collision no? the temperature varies that will come to it slowly and gradually will come to it we just have to know this one right now that k is equal to a a into e to the power minus e upon rt the first thing which there affects is your collision theory that whenever a product has to be formed collision has to be done now collision is a factor which is temperature dependence uh, can you show the previous page on my yes we'll stop till here you just go through it and then we'll stop we'll continue from here on tomorrow on okay tomorrow we have a class right yes, yes the a over here is not the concentration no frequency factor or arrhenius factor it's a constant term here concentration is not that much important because we are working with the temperature here right the concentration is nowhere related in this so the only variable in this Temperation would be the temperature, uh, temperature and the activation energy also would yes. be very good, right? Yes. Because like uh, with Others different are reactions, yes, with different reactions we'd have different activation energy. I'm guessing. Yes. Got it yes, till here. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Check. We'll stop here today. Yes, ma'am. We'll continue from here tomorrow on, right? Right, ma'am. Okay.